dental implants in pediatric dentistry dental implants in growing children definition dental implant is defined as a prosthetic device made up of alloplastic materials implanted into the oral tissue under the mucosal or periosteal layer and on or within the bone to provide Retention and support for a fixed or removable prosthesis. Dot. Introduction. Children and adolescents are seen to manifest anodontia, congenitally missing teeth as well as teeth loss due to trauma. The conservation of bone may be the most important reason for the use of dental implants in growing patients. In some cases to stimulate alveolar bone development in cases of Congenital partial anodontia and traumatic tooth loss where oral rehabilitation is required even before skeletal and dental maturation has occurred. 4. 5. Other factors that favor implant placement in children are their excellent local blood supply, positive immunobiologic resistance, and uncomplicated osseous healing. 5. 6. The issue of timing of placement of implant in children is Still under critical evaluation as there are two major concerns. One, first, if implants are present during several years of facial growth, there's a danger of them becoming embedded, relocated, or displaced as the jaw grows. Two, second area of concern is the effect of prosthesis on growth. Growth and implant placement growth in the maxilla and mandible does not happen uniformly in one plane, it is multidirectional, occurring at sagittal, vertical, and transverse planes. Growth does not happen at a fixed pace. Slow periods of growth are followed by phase of growth spurts. The teeth maintain their position in the arches by following this pace of growth through remodeling and drifting within the alveolar bone. Dot. Maxillary growth early. Childhood, the transverse growth of the maxilla is influenced by the increasing width of the cranial base and growth at the median suture. This sutural growth accelerates at puberty and is the earliest of the three dimensions to be completed in adolescence. Transverse growth. Early placement of implant can give rise to a diastema with the adjacent teeth as transverse growth occurs. Transverse problems are not reported in implants placed in the anterior maxilla even as early as nine years of age. Morais et al. suggested that a decrease of incisor canine circumference noted from 13 to 18 years of age was associated with a decrease in arch length rather than a narrowing in arch width. Overall, the changes are those that would contribute to crowding in the dental arches. More ACF, Lebrid LM, Kent RL. Changes in the natural dentition. After second molar emergence 13 to 18 years. Bashara et al. Observe the tooth size arch length. Discrepancy increases significantly from early adolescence to mid-adulthood in both maxillary and mandibular arches. Dot. Changes in the maxillary and mandibular tooth size arch length relationship from early adolescence to early adulthood. A longitudinal study, MJ Orthodentofacial Orthip, 1989, 95-46-59. 14. Increased crowding during the period of maximum growth can result in an implant crown that is out of alignment with adjacent natural teeth. Sagittal growth, resorption, occurs at the anterior surface of maxilla that brings it downward and forward. Early placement of implant could result in a loss of labial cortical bone for the implant. There is a spontaneous missile drift in the teeth in which the implants do not participate. Vertical growth. Vertical growth of the maxilla occurs by sutural lowering. There is growth in the orbits. Increase in the size of the nasal cavity and maxillary sinuses by resorption on the nasal surface and deposition on the palatal and alveolar surface. The vertical growth of the face is the last to complete. Adult levels of vertical growth are near complete by 17 to 18 years in girls in even later in boys and are further influenced by the facial growth type. Hence, in early placement of an implant can lead to its presence in the nasal floor after puberty while the permanent teeth have moved down.
Westwood reported the case of a boy aged 15 years and 4 months in whom an implant was inserted to replace the congenitally missing maxillary left second premolar immediately after removal of the retained primary molar. A radiograph taken 48 months following implant placement revealed bone resorption due to skeletal growth in the floor of the antrum that exposed the apical end of the implant in the sinus. Westwood Erm, Duncan J.M. Implants in Adolescence, a literature review in case reports. Mandibular growth The mandible being more closely associated with the cranial structures shows a differential growth as compared to the maxilla. This is more in the sagittal plane which is responsible for converting the more convex facial profile of the child to a straighter adult profile. The sagittal growth of the mandible is through endochondral growth in the condyle that extends the length but has no impact on the shape of the mandible as such. Transverse growth The transverse growth in the mandible completes very early because of the closure of the symphysis in the first year of life and only limited changes occur afterward through remodeling. There is resorption of the bone lingually and deposition buccally that leads to remodeling. This pattern of bone growth may bring about lingual positioning of the implant in case it is placed early vertical growth, the apposition at the dento-alveolar complex and rotation of the condyle that appears to displace the mandible downward and forward from the cranium. The vertical dimension is maintained through the dento-alveolar compensatory mechanism. Endosseous implants, two in the maxilla and four in the Mandible were placed in a three-year-old child with ectodermal dysplasia at after a five-year follow-up implants placed in the anterior mandible moved with the mandible as growth occurred in the condyles and rami. The rotation of the mandible, which accompanies growth, did not cause a significant problem relative to the angulation of the implants in the prostodontic occlusal. Plain. The maxillary implant, however, was close to the nasal floor use of endosseous implants in a three-year-old child with ectodermal dysplasia. Case report and five-year follow-up. Montanari et al. reported a case of a child affected with it accompanied with anodontia at two years of age. Conventional upper and lower prostheses were made to allow for mastication and normal physiological development. At 11 years and 11 months, fabrication of lower implants supported dentures and an upper conventional denture was indicated. Mandibular growth in sagittal and transverse direction showed no adverse effects on implant position. After a three-year follow-up, the implant supported overdenture was well accepted by the patient. Oral rehabilitation with implants supported Overdenture in a child with hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia. Growth assessment, chronologic. Age is not a true indicator of growth cessation. There is a wide range of pubertal growth spurt. In boys, 11 to 17 years and girls, 9 to 15 years, there is no accurate indicator as to when growth has ceased. A reliable assessment of growth is based on cephalometric radiographic examination. Serial cephalometric radiographs are taken six months apart and their tracings are superimposed to ensure that no growth has taken place, although it is the most reliable method. But it takes a lot of time and delays implant insertion. Another accurate way of determining skeletal age is to take a hand wrist radiograph and compare it to a standardized atlas. Capping of the epiphysis adductor sesamoid epiphysis and diaphysis three quick indicators of growth. Completion are the appearance of adductor sesamoid of the thumb, capping of the epiphysis of the middle phalanx of the third finger and fusion of the epiphysis and diaphysis of the radius. As the skeletal growth of the long bones is complete, facial growth two stops, or it is safe to assume that it is near completion and implants can be safely placed. 31 factors to be considered for implant placement in growing patients 32 skeletal maturity level age of the patient implants placed after 15 years in girls and 18 years in boys or when two annual cephalograms show no change in 
position of adjacent teeth in alveolus are said to be most predictable prognosis. Sex of the patient as males grow for a longer time period than females implants in adolescent boys must be delayed longer than adolescent girls to allow growth completion. Number and location of missing teeth in patients with complete anodontia implants can be planned in the maxilla and anterior mandible as early as seven years. However, it must be kept in mind that the implants may have to be replaced or prosthesis may have to be modified. It is advisable to restore a larger eight and toothless area with implants than to place a single implant supported crown. Scope of dental implants in Pediatric Dentistry 33 Implant popularity as a treatment modality in adults is tremendous. However, the treatment planning and execution of implant placement in children and adolescents is still in its infancy. In partially eaten toothless cases, long term success of dental implants has been responsible for other clinicians to broaden the use of implants to adolescents. In the absence of maxillary teeth, the maxilla will remain underdeveloped both sagittally and vertically, as the alveolar ridges will not develop. In contrast, the mandibular growth is not dependent on the presence of teeth. Therefore, this proportionate relationship between two jaws will tend to occur in the presence of hypodontia or anodontia resulting in class 3 development. Furthermore, physiological and psychological factors increase the pressure to start early. Treatment Indication Pediatric patients with ectodermal dysplasia implants combined with bone Grafting in patients with cleft of the alveolus and palate children and adolescents having anodontia, partial anodontia, congenitally missing teeth, teeth lost as a result of trauma. In cooperative children who find it difficult to adjust to removable appliances, contraindication 36. Prepubertal age group individuals with pubertal growth spurred inadequate mesiodistal space parts of Dental Implant 37 Recommendations by Area for Placing an Implant Anterior Maxilla It is the most risky site for early implantation due to the unpredictability of growth in the area, especially in the presence of natural teeth. Premature implant placement can necessitate a repeated lengthening of the transgingival or transmucosal part of the implant, resulting in a poor implant prosthesis ratio and adverse load magnification. It is advised to delay implant insertion until after skeletal growth is completed. 39. Posterior maxilla and early inserted implant can become submerged occlusally and exposed apically because of resorption of bone in the maxillary sinus floor of the nose. It is recommended to delay an implant placement until after cessation of growth. 40. Anterior mandible This site seems to hold the greatest potential for early use of an implant-supported prosthesis. However, use of early implants in combination with teeth is not advisable due to the significant compensatory change in the dentition in this area during growth. 41. Posterior mandible It is recommended to delay implant placement until skeletal growth is completed as progressive infra-occlusion of the implant and harm to adjacent teeth preclude the early placement of implant in this site. 42 Recommendations for Implant Placement According to the length of the Eden Tulis span, Sharma and Vargovic stated that the use of implants for the growing child is not routinely recommended due to concerns regarding jaw growth. Though from all the studies it is evident that implant placement should be delayed till the completion of growth. There are certain cases where we can consider the placement of implants. 43. Sharma and Vargovic have classified these patients into three distinct groups that follow specific anatomic criteria. Group 1. Children who are congenitally missing a single tooth and have adjacent Permanent teeth group 2. Children who are missing more than a few teeth but have permanent teeth present adjacent to Eden toothless sites group 3. Children who are completely Eden toothless in one arch or have one or two teeth in poor positions in the arch. 44. In group 1 patients if the 
implant is placed before completion of growth, the implant will become submerged relative to adjacent teeth. This would lead to an aesthetic complication and may result in poor implant to crown ratio. In group 2 patient removable prostheses are used so as to orthodontically optimize teeth positions and consolidate eaten toothless spaces. In some patients implants may be placed before growth is completed for psychological benefits of having a more functional, stable and aesthetic solution. When the growth is completed, there will be a need for surgically repositioning of the implant segment with segmental osteotomy or distraction osteogenesis to a more favorable position. Another alternative would be a replacement of prosthesis with pink porcelain to improve aesthetic symmetry of tooth proportion and gingival position. 46. Pink porcelain distraction osteogenesis segmental osteotomy. Group 3 patients usually have the diagnosis of ectodermal dysplasia. As the teeth are absent, the dento-alveolar growth and subsequent submergence of the implant is not a concern. Here, the downward and forward growth of the mandible and subsequent jaw size discrepancy is a problem. However, owing to poor oral hygiene, placement of implants in patients younger than the age of 7 is not indicated. In a study by Kearns, Perrot and Sharma, in Patients with ectodermal dysplasia, implants have been successfully placed in the maxillary arch and in the mandible anterior to the mental foramen. However, surgery may be necessary when growth is complete to correct the jaw size discrepancy. The prosthesis may have to be remade. 48. Recent advances Mini implants Mini dental implants and the eyes their small diameter dental implants are sometimes referred to as SDIs, small diameter implants, as well as NDIs, narrow body implants. Diameter, 1.8 mm to 2.9 mm less than 3 mm, various lengths 10, 13, 15 and 18 m. 49th MDI are available with either an oval head for use with removable or fixed dentures or a square head for fixed prostheses or retrofitting a poorly adapted partial denture. A small pilot bit is used to create the opening for the implant to be threaded into the bone. The definitive implant-supported crowns are usually delivered within two weeks of surgery. 50 advantages Immediate loading can be inserted in minimal tissues without relying on grafting techniques minimally invasive procedure one stage denture stabilization does not require osteotomy cost effective can be placed with a simple technique in patients with ridge too narrow for conventional implants 51 transitional implants diameter ranges minus 1.8 to 2.8 um length minus 7 millimeters to 14 millimeters fabricated with pure titanium in a single body with treated surface. Primary function is to absorb masticatory stress during healing phase. The abutment head generally has a 5-degree taper, which makes it optimal for retention of cement retained. Prostheses. Only one drill, a 1.5 mm or 2 mm twist drill is required for placement of the implants. 53. Advantages provisionalization of fully and partially eaten toothless jaws. Undisturbed healing of bone grafts effective way to generate aesthetic transitional appliances. Allows evaluation of phonetics and function. Cost effective. 54. Conclusion Mini implant is becoming promising alternative to crown anchorage in the anterior region, especially in oral rehabilitation of patients under development due to its simple ways to use versatility and great. Biocompatibility 55 Despite limitations, it is a simple, single appointment and superior technically, as it provides good aesthetic and functional results which improves the patient's quality of life, social integration and increases the self-esteem.